Okay, number three, they're asking us to find the limit of the expression one half of absolute value of x plus five over x plus five as x approaches negative five from the right. So just the notation alone is really kind of intimidating here, but hopefully through the first two examples that I've shown you, you have a little bit of an understanding of what's going on here. Now let's think back to the beginning of this course when we discussed what this graph looks like here. This absolute value of x plus five over five is what I'm calling Jesse's giant step. Now the one half in front, the one half placed in front of any function gives us either a vertical stretch or a compression depending on whether it's bigger than one or between zero and one. Because one half is a value between zero and one, we know it's gonna be a vertical compression. Now let's talk about where this step is gonna be, this giant step. Because we have absolute value of x plus five over x plus five, the step is actually gonna be over here at negative five. And typically the step is one up and one down, but now it's only gonna be a half up and a half down. Okay, so now that we've got the graph in place, the question will just take a matter of seconds to answer. So we've gotta find negative five on the graph, which is over here, and we're, we have a choice of looking up or looking down, and generally this would cause a problem, except that they're specifying approach from the right, because of that little plus there. So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna approach from the right, and I'm gonna go closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, and even though this is an open circle, the y values are approaching or hovering at a consistent one half. So the answer to this question is one half. If the question had been stated, find the limit of the same exact graph as x approaches negative five from the left, the left, what do you think the answer would be? Well, if you approach negative five from the left, the y values are now hovering down here at a very consistent negative one half. So maybe that, that's something you were thinking about. All right, example number four. This is the greatest integer function, also known as the step function. Our particular calculus book has a few homework problems that use this, but I don't know if I've ever seen it on an actual AP exam. Okay, so whatever value you put in here, it's gonna get sent to the integer to the left when on a number line. So let's say we had the number like 1.2. If you wanted to take the greatest integer of 1.2, the integer to the left would be one. So 1.2 goes to 1. 1. 1.9 is going to go to 1. 1 is going to go to 1. Everything is going to be 1 until you get to 2. The minute you get to 2, it's going to jump up to 2. So it's going to be a closed circle on the left side, but an open circle on the right side. Now let's think about something like the greatest integer of 0.8. So 0.8 is between zero and one, and the integer to the left is zero. So 0.8 goes to zero, 0.2 would go to zero, zero would go to zero, one point, uh, 0.9 would go to zero, but the minute you get to one, it's gonna jump up. So it's gonna look like another step of this staircase, like this. And those sirens, um, you probably think there's a big disaster happening, but it's not a big deal, I'm sure. Uh, so we're asked to find the limit of this as x approaches one. So let me go ahead and identify where one is. And we're approaching one from the left. So let's, let's find one, let's jump over to the left and that's approach. And the y values are remaining at a very consistent number. Do you know what that number is? The number is zero. And let me finish this example so I can See if I need to evacuate. <laughs> okay, I think one more example coming up and then we're done with one-sided limits. So our final example of a one-sided limit looks kind of intense. It's actually a one-sided limit regarding a piecewise function. And uh, the question itself is not gonna be that difficult, but again, the strategy here is gonna be to draw a very, very quick sketch to see exactly what we have and how to approach from this specific side. So let me go ahead and get some axes down there so we can go ahead and draw the graph. Okay, so the top piece of this piecewise function 
is x cubed minus 2. Now the graph for x cubed is that of a wiggle, and the minus 2 on the outside brings that wiggle down 2 units. So the wiggle is going to look like this, but we're only drawing the portion of it that's less than or equal to 0. So the wiggle looks like this to the left. It would, it would traditionally keep going up to the right like so, except that because of the restriction we're only looking at the leftmost portion of that wiggle. Now I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to do the bottom piece. And the bottom piece is x squared plus 1. And the graph of x squared looks like a parabola. The plus 1 shifts the parabola up one unit and the parabola lives only for those x values greater than 0. So that's going to look like this. So here is our graph, and now let's go back and read the question and answer the specific thing being asked. They want us to find the limit of this piecewise function as x approaches 0 and the plus means from the right. That should actually be a little bit higher. It should be, it should look like that. I don't know what happened, but uh, this means approach 0 from the right. So here's 0 right here, and if we want to go jump to the right, we're going to land on which color curve do you think? Well, if you said red, then, then you're correct. So we're going to jump up along the red curve, and then we're going to reapproach the value 0, and the y values are dropping, and they're dropping, and they're dropping, and they're dropping. What do you think they're dropping toward? If you guessed 1, because this parabola is 1 unit up, then you're correct. The answer to this limit question is 1. So this video series has been on finding one-sided limits. If you see a value with a little plus after it, it means approach from the right. And if you see a value with a minus after it, it means approach from the left. And overall, the strategy has been for examples of this type to just draw a quick sketch. If you have that visual in front of you, it's going to be much easier for you to answer the question.